actually. So um, we'll, as usual, we'll be recorded. So if you're not happy about having yourself on here, please let us know um, afterwards. Just drop us an email and we can we can sort that out before the recording goes out. Um, if you could keep yourselves mute during as Rob's talking, that would be really helpful. It just keeps background noise out. But please, if you want to ask questions, Rob said he's more than welcome to take them as he's talking. So um, please just unmute yourself and ask the question. If you're not comfortable doing that, put it in the chat box and we can either answer it at the end or I'll ask it for you. Um, so for those of you that don't know that if you hover your mouse the chat box is at the bottom of your screen most of the time uh, and you just click on that and you can just type in there um, I think most people are aware now but just in case you're not um, just to remind you that support through Terry Cymru is 100% funded um, as long as you've completed the online business review which I, I'm pretty sure all of you have now actually um, and if you wanted one-to-one -one advice or support as well that can be arranged to either get in touch with me as part of a flowers network or veg network uh, or direct with Tuffy Cymru um, and we can set that up for you can be relation to anything uh, with your business so please do get in touch um, if there's something specific um, I'm not going to labour any more than that but I'll tell you what the next sessions are at the end of this session. Um, Pheasant Acres an established family business operating from a nursery premises near Bridge End in South Wales. You'll see Rob's in his polytunnel there or one of them um, and he's an award-winning daily expert and we're absolutely thrilled to have him with us today and he's going to share the, uh, some of his expertise so uh, I'll pass over to you Rob. Morning everybody. <coughs> Hopefully we can get this weather now for the next couple of days and uh, it's not going to get too cold next week because that's the last thing we want on uh, dahlias. So over the last couple of years, dahlias have had such an explosion in popularity and partly because of new breeding. Now, breeding is done by so many growers every year. And what we found is that British, English growers, Welsh growers, you know, Scottish growers, they're all doing different types of breeding. They're breeding small pom-pom dahlias, which are two inches in diameter, up to the giant decoratives, which are, you know, 15 inches across. Now, we've got over 600 varieties, and I've got to the stage now where when we see new varieties every year, you have to make sure that there's something that's either going to be better than what you've got or it's something really special. Now, over the last number of years, creme de cassis, creme de cognac have been most probably the two most popular varieties of dahlia that are new. Apart from Café au lait, which has been around now for around about 30 years, but in the last five years, we have sold in the region of about 5,000 plants every year. Now, we're propagating this year 80,000 dahlia cuttings. So <clears throat> we're actually stopping buying all our Dutch tubers, uh, mainly because of two things. One, we're not guaranteed what we get from the tubers from the Dutch. Uh, been out there many a time myself and you know when you've got somebody growing a lot we're walking along a row and I'll say oh this is you know so and so variety and oh yeah but we got another one that looks very similar to that but it makes a better tuber and all of a sudden you look at it and it's not exactly the same but it is similar and this is what a lot of the Dutch growers tend to be doing now they're finding when something gets quite similar and maybe better health, better tuber maker, throws more cuttings, they'll swap it over. They won't tell you, but, and that's where a lot of variations, and people like myself and a lot of other growers, we're finding that when you were buying tubers, and this is what we've done over the last number of years, we've grown any Dutch tuber that we've bought, we don't sell it for the first year, and we'll grow it all on, every one of them creates a 70 just to check the way it grows and what happens with it. But lots of people over the last couple of years have been complaining about Dutch tubers. Now, <clears throat> this is a typical Dutch tuber. Some of the varieties, we had about 30 varieties in this year from Holland, which 
actually came in before Brexit. And going through the boxes, we found that on it. Now, I'm just going to bring this right up to the camera. And you can see on there, this is Dahlia Gall. And this is another reason why we're going to do all our own tubers. Can everybody see it? Yes? Yes. Yeah, yeah. there we are. So this is the Dahlia Gall. And if you push that with your thumb, it comes away from the tuber, but it's only on the one tuber. Now that's an easier way to see it. Now this tuber is heading straight to the skip, nowhere else. And as you can see, it's made a cluster and it looks like there's about 20 or 30 shoots. Now, what we're finding is, as I was saying, lots of Dutch tubers are coming over with gall on. So that's one reason why we're gonna produce our own tubers. Now, <clears throat> this is a nice large tuber that we lifted from the open ground last year. And you can see it's still, it's been dried over winter. It's quite a decent sized tuber. This variety is Cornell, which is a, a red ball. Now, at this time of year, some of the big ones, we don't propagate off these, but what I'll be doing is going around and just trimming right back into the fleshy part of the tuber. So we're taking off all that. So we're cleaning the tuber up. This tuber will go straight back into the ground. Normally we start planting these out around about the second week of April and then covering with fleece. So we're doing that. Then anything that's dry on the top of the tuber, you can see that one has completely dried out there. So that will now be taken off as well. And <clears throat> even on the top of the tuber, there's a lovely shoot coming up there. So this tuber is inhibiting the, the growth on that. So we're just getting out that already by taking that one shoot. You can see on this one, we've got one shoot coming from the base of the tuber, but that's coming up and it'll come around between the tubers and the others are all on the top. We'll take that one off as well because you can see now <clears throat> these shoots, anybody saying if I'm not in view, any of these shoots now, they're gonna grow on quite quickly but this will be grown indoors in one of the poly tunnels. And I think we've got some photographs which we can see of the poly tunnels when they're in flower. Tubers going in now, roughly the middle of April. These will be in flower in June. And as you can see, cut flowers in June in the poly tunnel. You can get good premium prices for dahlias at that time of the year. With us, we use them for the shows. And outdoors in the field, a lot later, they'll be in flower about July, August, end of July, early August. But that's off tubers that size. Now, some other tubers, these are our tubers that we take cuttings of every year. Um, <clears throat> we've gone over now to peat free compost with everything. Now, this little tuber, as you can see there, was a tuber that was taken on, the cutting was actually taken the 24th of April last year. So you can see it's made a lovely sized tuber for one season's growth. But on the top there now, you can see I've already taken cuttings off. You can see I've taken one off the top, broke one off there, one off the top there, one in the middle there, and now we've got all these other shoots. So <clears throat> this tuber, the variety is called Jody Wilkinson, which is a lovely large palm, which is about two and a half to three inches in a caramel color. But as you can see, this little tuber now, this will be planted out into the flowering beds. And these shoots, we'll reduce them down to about four or five and that will go into the flowering beds in the tunnel, roughly about the, the middle of April. And then 
These are some of our three litre pots. This one's called Islander. Now we've got a photograph of this one. This is a beautiful, large decorative. It should be coming up, here it comes. No, not that one. It's a fusion kitty, here we are, Islander. Now, Islander, over the last couple of years, it's a seedling off Cafe au lait. Same form as Cafe au lait. Now, over the last couple of years as well, we've had Cafe au lait Rose, Cafe au lait Royale come out. Not wonderful, great growers, I find. Cafe au lait, perfect, excellent colours, excellent form. But the variation in the colours of the Rose and the Royale are very mixed. And again, what's happened with the Dutch varieties, they mix the stock up. You're now getting some Cafe au lait Royale coming through when you order Cafe au lait and you get the odd rows coming up as well. This variety, Island, is quite a tall variety. It's about four foot six to five foot. Flowers quite early, but what we have found is the richness in the color and the length of the stems. Now, with Café au lait, you get lovely long stems. With the Island, uh, when in, if you don't disbud, and what I mean by that, you're taking off the side buds, you get in stems on the flower heads of these around about 15 to 18 inches off each one. Now, this is our three litre pots, which we sell. We sell these online and these have been left. This is one of last year's. And you can see now the shoots are just starting to appear. So I'm just gonna knock this out of the pot. And these have been watered now once or twice over the last couple of weeks. But last year we changed everything to peat-free compost. So problem being now is that we are finding that the tubers in the peat-free, you can see it's quite, quite coarse, lots of wood chip in it as well, but just scrape around the top of the tuber. And the pen is nice and easier. You can see there's another shoot coming up there. But what we found is with the peat free, it keeps it quite moist over the winter. It drained quite well early on, but not all the moisture left the tubers. So as you can see, this tuber was made in this pot last year from a cut in. And you can see Rob, the lovely Rob, colour. Can I, oh. can, I, can I ask you um, if you yes. could hold someone's asked if you could hold things a bit higher that's it so that people can right. see it thank you yeah lovely you can see there the shoots that are around the the one tuber but i'm just cleaning around the rest and you can see the here now you see it yeah there we are you can see the new shoot coming on the base here as well these are all there's about six or seven shoots on this tuber coming up right around and but as I was saying, this tuber is one cut in that was taken last April, March, April. So tubers that you've got now in, you can start taking cuttings of. And I'll show you how to go on to cut in. So these are the tubers, as I say, in a peat free, they've grown on quite well and kept over winter. And these now we'll just keep cutting them back cut all last year's growth back and you just check at this time of year around any of the tubers that's been outside that these have not been outside they've been under the staging in one of the greenhouses with no heat on them they were in the the Kida poly tunnel and you can see they've that tuber now, lovely form. Now this was a cut in, as I was saying, was taken last uh, March, April. So this time of year, last year. So that's made that growth in one year in a pot. Now, this will give us, you know, if you want to, you could have put that in and started off. We could take each of these off as cut ins, or we can leave this grow on. And that's what we'll be doing. We'll leave this grow on for cut flower for this year. 
So that will go back now into the ground, like we did with the tuber that was been lifted from the field. That will go into the straight into the poly tunnel, and we'll have flowers in the middle of June to early July. Now, as I was showing with the smaller tubers, this is Bishop of Canterbury. Now, we do a lot of tubers that we grow, and this is what we sell online, but we're actually changing the size of pot this year because these are not recyclable. We've gone on to a new pot, and everything that we're doing now is in the, in the top or in the grey, and everything that will be recyclable as well as the peach tree. The only bit of plastic that still be in there, unfortunately, is the label. So, <clears throat> but this is a perfect plant now. Lovely, off a little tuber, you can see there, and you can see the tuber in the base. Just small tubers that we grew on last year. And what we do with this plant now will be ready to be either potted on into a three litre pot, which will be ready then to be sold. And these are the ones that we sell on in the shows, if there are any again this year, or onto garden centres or from the nursery from about the middle of May, early June onwards, when they're coming into flower. So, now, <clears throat> this is a crate of cafe au lait, and not cafe au lait, the creme de cognac tubers from last year. Now, if you can see there, you can see all the tubers, if I turn it down, you can see all the tubers in the crates, and they're on the surface. We don't cover the tubers. And if I move the camera, you must probably be able to see some of the other ones that we've got. Oh. The ones on the beds here now. So these are all, have I lost everybody? Hold on, that's something and I shouldn't have. All right. If I'm lucky, can you see that? Yeah, is that better? Yeah. Yeah, we can see. Right. All the tubers now where we've taken cuttings off, you can see all the tubers are set on the surface. And we've taken the cuttings off and then we're cleaning away all the debris that's left. But the next sort of shoots you can see quite closely are all coming around the tops of the tubers. Now, La Luna, that one is a, a yellow, white and yellow, medium decorative. Now, with the cuttings for those, we'll have, with the tubers, we'll have taken those cuttings right the way through the month from around about the beginning of March, right the way through till the end of April, we'll keep on taking cuttings. And the way we take cuttings, um, so where we've got our tubers here, this is a perfect size. And what we'll do, we'll just pull the cutting from the tuber. So you can see you've got the base there. So we'll have one. That is an ideal size two. And we just go along and... Just snap them off the, the base. And again there, take one another one off. And you'll just keep pulling them off. So you're taking the bit that in fact has got a tiny root on it, but we won't be taking that. We'll take that off. So we'll take another one off. We'll take them off like that. And we take it right down. So anything that's about an inch and a half to two inches in length, we'll take off. And as you can see there, we'll just keep going through. We take them off rather than cut them off the tuber. So we've taken them off. We don't cut them from the tuber because if we do use the knife on them, we could end up passing any virus that is going from one to the other. So you can see we just take them all down. But you can see then already that you've got the next lot uh, there. In about a fortnight's time, you'll have another lot of cuttings coming up. 
So when I say we've taken 80,000 cut-ins this year, you can see it's quite quite easily because one tray like this will give me in the region of around about 30 to 40 cut-ins to take in one time. And if there's just, just pull them and they come from the tuber very, very easily. We won't do them all on there now, otherwise. And then we clean the, the base of them up. And you can see now where the heel from, I guess behind, you can see the heel where it came off the tuber. Now, <clears throat> what we're finding is that when we take cut in this way, we take off two or three leaves and <clears throat> That's the bit that we are leaving you now to take the cut in. I'm looking at the wrong side there. We take the cut in around about two and a half to three inches in length. So that's a perfect one. And again, there you've got the heel on the bottom. So we'll just trim that up and between your finger and your thumb. Now, on the side of the nodes where the leaf nodes are, you've got the little shoots. Take those out of the cut ins because those will actually prevent the cutting from rooting because that's where our root is going to come from. So as you can see there, we've got a lovely shoot again with about two and a half to three inches in length, clean, and that's making sure that we're looking at everything on the leaves. There's no green fly, there's no white fly or no black fly. And then, so we get the next one, we do exactly the same. You can see we've cleaned up down on the bottom, just clean it up. And we're on the leaf joint there. That's what I mean about that little shoot. You can see the little shoot there. So just knock that off. Can, and you, can you lift that up slightly higher up? Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Let me find another one. <clears throat> right, so what I've done, when we take, let me see if I can angle the camera a bit better. Right, that might be better. Right. Take off the two leaves at the base and the old leaf. And then this is a, the side shoots that I'm talking about. Those are the ones that we need to take out. Just flick them out because what they'll do, they'll start to grow up. When this is starting, because it's going into the compost, this those side shoots will keep on growing because they're taking nutrients and water from the main stem. And what they'll do, they'll start coming alongside. When you get the root in, that's one of the causes for gall. And it's because that it's not being cleaned around the cutting. So then between your finger and thumb, just take off the leaves, just snap them back down first and then up. And then again, just knock out those two shoots. And again, so we've got three there. Now, when we get some of the, the shorter ones, you can see they have got this white bit where they were in the soil. And again, we're just going to take off the, the shoot, hold them between your finger and a thumb, and just break off the, the shoot. And that's our perfect cut in. Now, we use a mix of our compost mix is a mix of acoya, perlite, and vermiculite. And it's very, very open. So, and this year we've been rooting into, into the nine cell trays, mainly because one, I don't want to get varieties mixed up. And normally with the staff on the nursery, it's quite easy for somebody to come along and pick up a variety with the label in. Uh, if there's a row of them on the propagating bench, then somebody comes along and picks the next tray up and they don't know what they are, then they get mixed up quite easily. So this year, every tray, as you can see, this is one of the, the end of the last year's black ones. And so they've all got their own label in. That one was Skelmersdale Jane, which is a new variety. It's a miniature ball. It's white with a, a lavender hint right around the petal. That 
cut in was taken on 6th of the 3rd. So that's the 6th of March. And I'm just going to pop one of these out. And there's your perfect cut in with all the root now ready for potting on to either a 10 centimeter pot or into a one liter pot. But as you can see, I'll just pick another one, put the one out of the middle. And you can see again, perfect rooting. And that's what we're looking for is lovely white, clean root. And you can see that that plant now is ready to grow on once it goes into the, the garden or into a pot. So we've now got our tray of compost, which we'll lightly, just lightly firm it down. And as I said, it's a mix of three parts of the coir to one part of perlite, one part the micalite. Now, normally what I would do, I'd leave this sit now in a trough of water till the water's just showing on the surface of the compost. And then with the cuttings, just push them in into the compost. And obviously I try to grade them as I'm putting them in so that the height wise, so that they don't, and with them being wet, they, the compost being wet, we might as well do a couple more just to put it in. So you can see there, same again. That was the one with that with the root. Remember, I was saying about the root on it. That's got a little root there already. But I'm just going to take that root back to there, take off those two lower leaves, and again. And you can see now again that cutting is ready to go in, and. As I say, we we'll lightly firm the compost. When the water, when it's watered, then it drains in, and you don't need to water overhead. Now, all our cuttings are then put onto heat mats. Now, over the last two years, we used to use soil warming cables, which were the ones that we've got in the beds that are on here. And if I show you one of those quickly, let me take out that tray. And I've literally got the bit that's got the end on. Have you got me again or have you lost me? We've lost the. <laughs> right. so we, can't. we can hear you, but we can't see you. Can't see you, right? Let me see what I've done. This is where I'm not technical, bit. I may have to call somebody to see what I've done here. Yeah. <laughs> Anybody get any ideas what they've done? <laughs> no. You may have just switched your camera off, Rob. Uh, can you see bottom left? Yeah. Can you see where it says stop video? No, I've got, nothing. I've got, That's it. I've got home screen on. Um, Right, I'm back in. Oh, there you go. Well done. Here we are. Yeah, I, could, I pressed the off button. On the... Right, so let me go back down. Right, so you can see there. Now, this is, again, some tubers from last year. But what I want to show you is the heated cable that we've got underneath the... And you can see the heated cable runs. Can we see it? The heated cable here runs through the, the sand beds. Now... Those we've had for the last four or five years on the 
on the nursery and we found them really good. But two years ago, we were introduced by a company to the heat sheets. Now, I'm going to walk from one greenhouse to the next now. So this is going to be, hopefully we won't, uh, we won't lose it as I uh, walk down. And then you can see all the, the cuttings in the, in the next greenhouses. So these greenhouses now are, they're quite short greenhouses, they are foot long, so you can all see they're 20 foot long, but in each of these greenhouses, I'm just going to take the camera along now, can you all see that? Yeah. Yeah. So. These now are the, the cuttings that I was showing you in the tray earlier on. And you can see they're all, this one again was taken the fourth of the third. But underneath we've got the heat sheet, which is a new form of heating that we've used. And that's all it is, is a, a metal aluminium sheet with wires running along them and they then heat the whole area. So there's no hot spots like you get with the, the, the sand beds. There's no hot spots at all. Now, they're very economical. They're on a thermostat. And what we have found this year is that the cuttings are rooting literally in about 10 days from taking the cuttings. Now, I'll go into the next greenhouse. And because these are small greenhouses, we don't need any other heat with them other than the, need some oil in on that one. <laughs> we don't need any other heat apart from the, uh, the heat sheets. And you can see there, though these cuttings were taken, uh, what we got, brown sugar was taken the 17th of the third. And I'm just gonna lift this one out. And you can see there, two lovely roots. Just, whoop, there we are. I, although I broke the, the shoot. Now, you can see there, that cutting has got lovely roots on it. Can we see it? Hold can it you see the cutting? Yeah, just hold it a little bit higher. Higher, right, there yeah, we are. A little bit again. So. <laughs> a bit higher. Yeah. Yeah, that's There it. we are. That's been in since, as I said, the 17th of the 3rd. And what we've got there now, we've got a couple of nice roots coming around. So that's roughly, as I say, 10 days from when we've taken the cut-in. So, but as you can see, the cut-ins are all done up until, there we are, the 24th, Cornell Bronze, Bridgeview Aloha, uh, Magenta Star, you know, which is... Uh, Café Alley Royale, and they'll all start rooting now very, very quickly. In the, the only problem is at this time of year, and now with the weather we've got today and tomorrow, we'll have to make sure that the greenhouses are well ventilated because, because there, there's no root on a lot of these cuttings at the moment. They need to be sprayed over regularly. So a mist unit or a sprayer tank sprayer where you can just go over and spray every hour on them time consuming to stop them wilting because that's what will happen now in the uh, in this heat now with the tubers that we have got in now the ones that we take the cuttings off what we'll end up doing with those once we've taken sufficient cuttings we'll then start to plant the tubers out into the ground and <clears throat> we don't start planting out in this area until about the first week of June. We won't plant any plants out. We'll start the tubers going out. The tubers will go out at this stage that we had earlier on. We'll knock them out of the pots. These will go out into the ground roughly about the middle of May, but we'll be fleecing over the top every night on them. We leave the fleece on them permanently 
until about the second week of June, where they'll have pushed the fleece up and they could be up about a foot in height underneath that fleece. And that's what then in the gardens, we'll go along and in the garden area, we'll pinch the growing tip out. So for instance, what I mean by that, I'm gonna cut one of the taller pieces of data in a second. When we do a second. So, Rob, while you're doing that, just yep. a question that's come through. What temperature do you have the heat mats on that? We've got them on at 15, oh. 15 degrees, and they're on that day and night. And we're finding at the moment in the day they're off anyway. In the night time, they're coming on and they're clicking off and they're coming on and clicking off. So the running cost of them is around about, we've worked out about three to four pence an hour. So it's quite uh, economical uh, heating because it's heating the whole greenhouse, not just that we haven't got gas heating in those now. And we're finding that, uh, you know, they're rooting very quickly. Uh, we've shaded the greenhouses, obviously because of the sun coming now. As quick, much as I want the sun everywhere, I don't want it on the dahlia cuttings. So when they're up in the ground, roughly that height now, what we'll be coming to do, and we've restricted the tubers early on. What we do, we restrict the tubers to either three or five shoots. If they're large varieties, like the cafe au lait, we let three shoots come up. But when the shoot is up around about a foot in height, we then just take out the growing tip. So breaking down, taking out the growing tip so that we've got two, four, six shoots. And the side shoots of these are the ones that will produce our flowers. And we, when do we start feeding, people ask me. We start feeding from about the time we've pinched out. So normally from about mid-May, every week we feed foliar feeding. We use a tractor sprayer, which is easy up and down the rows and gives you plenty of growth right throughout the season. Um, obviously when we plant in the tubers, when we plant the tubers in the ground, we put in first fish blood and bone and we put in some superphosphate. This year we put in some lime, we've done that in October, we put some lime on the field ready so that that's going to be uh, uh, good as well because last year we found we had a few deficiencies. So once we've got the dahlias growing on, we're then looking at, uh, you know, we've got to watch for frosts through the, through the month of, uh, of May still. And that's to say normally around about the 15th of May is when we take the fleece off and then but we're not gonna get any more frosts coming to uh, worry about the dahlias. So the cuttings, the cuttings that we've taken now, as I showed, these will be potted on. Now, we're gonna pot this on now and we'll be potting these on. We won't be planting the dahlia cuttings out until about the first week of June. Now, the difference in dahlia tubers and dahlia plants, you get a much more even growth on plants taken from cuttings. So for instance, if you were growing, uh, say 30, which we tend to do, we plant 30 uh, plants of one variety. We plant 30 tubers, we start cutting tubers from about flowers from the tubers about the middle of June, early July indoors. But outdoors from about the end of July, early August. And what we find is with the tubers, it's erratic. You could have one tuber in flower, the next tuber is a couple of days later, the next tuber maybe a week later. So you haven't got the full crop to cut off. Where with plants, we can pinch the growing tip out, leave five or six shoots come and we can guarantee more or less that we can go along and cut off every plant at the same time. So for instance, if you grow in for cut flower, like we grow for the markets, we grow for florists, they want perhaps 50 to 100 blooms. Like for instance, we get, you know, we get London florist ring and they order in advance, can they have 100 cafe au lait for so-and-so date? So we know that we've got them there. With tubers, because the way they grow, they're not all growing as fast as each other. 
And that's the reason why we grow more plants than tubers. The tubers we grow in the tunnels early on, the plants we tend to grow out on the field because when they'll make a tuber, as we've seen, if they can make it, that's last year's cut in again, it was probably a March cut in, they'll make a tuber that size. And, you know, when you consider that to that's some of the Dutch tubers, there's, you know, and that's quite a good Dutch tuber, you know, but that's a British tuber, or should I say Welsh tuber, you know, grown in our Welsh soil. The only problem is when you come to lifting the tubers in the autumn, when you've grown them in heavy clay soil like we've got, you're going to be lifting that out after one year. Now, if you've left that this year when we lift this tuber out, this tuber will be double the size again. I'm trying to see if I got any left in there. Let me have a quick look. I might have one or two. The answer to that is no, I don't. We've already thrown a so we don't. We tend then tend to keep our tubers for two years. We keep them one year, and you can see that's another tuber that's come out of the ground with us now. And again, the difference being is that the Dutch tubers are always long and thin, long roots on them, where tubers grown in clay soil are much more plump and as you can see on this one again, they're lovely forms, but the only part of the tuber that we really need, and this one actually shows, I picked a nice one there, just luck more than judgment. But on that one, I can actually make two tubers because I've got the tuber on the base there. There's no shoots on that yet, but that can be planted out. But on the piece I've just cut off, You can see the two lovely little red side. Now again, we just trim that. That now would be ideal for planting on into a flower pot. Can you all see those two little shoots? Is there an optimum pH as well, Rob, for dahlias? Dahlias are not too bad, actually. We, you know, we, <clears throat> as long as it's around about five point five to six point five, that's perfect. And you know, we found over the years, we've manured some years, and we get lots of vegetative growth and less flower. So try to manure the ground if you can every, you know, the year before you want to use it for dahlias, and you know, because you want flower more than leaf growth. Certain varieties, you're going to get a lot of leaf growth. But, you know, with that, into a normal potting compost, so we're all on peat free now. Everything we've got is all made by Levington, uh, ICL compost, peat free. And uh, we worked with it last year. The year before was a trial. We also used Melcourt, which we find is a little bit heavier. Um, when you see some of these composts, you look at them now if you're used to using peat. And when you see the difference in them, because there's so much wood bark now being pulped and put into compost. And obviously, in my opinion, it must take out some nitrogen from the, the compost to break down. So we're adding, when we feed right the way through the growing season in pots and when they're in the field, it's of slightly higher nitrogen. So that we make a tuber, again, something that size for next year. Now, <clears throat> during the growing season, the biggest pest for uh, dahlias is green fly, black fly. And then when we got the flowers, earwigs. You know, I think everybody, that used to be the pet hate for everybody. You know, and I can always say, no, I don't like dahlias because they have earwigs. And... My thing is, where do the earwigs stay the rest of the year? They're either in their marigolds, in your roses. In, so why is it just dahlias that everybody remembers earwigs? Because 
The dahlias are the longest flowering plant that we have in the garden. And September, October, when the dahlias are in their utmost in the gardens, everything else is going over, but everybody remembers earwigs in the dahlias. And one good solution for that is put the odd couple of bamboo canes around, get some straw, get some Vaseline. If you've got, say, for instance, I know all the exhibitors growing for shows, their best friend during the summer season is a jar of Vaseline. They put it on the stems of the flower, about two to three inches below the bud, and just a ring of Vaseline. Next morning, they'll come along, and on there, they'll find the earwig stuck, and then they just pick him off and throw him into next door's garden, I've been told. So, Adelius from tubers, we're planting out. We've looked at the pest and disease. Green fly, white, uh, white fly, we don't get outside. Green fly and black fly, you know, and that's general husbandry then making sure that, you know, we're going through checking everything uh, and spraying if necessary. Um, we've taken the cuttings off the tubers that will produce our plants for next year. And, you know, what we are doing now is we are taking cuttings right up until the end of April, which will produce tubers for us for next year. So, you know, we try to plant a new tuber that's one year old. So we are planting this size tuber out, you know, rather than planting big tubers. If you've got big tubers of varieties, you know, for instance, like that one, you could actually, you know, you could just go along and split that down the middle, like cut it through the secateurs and the spade, and then just clean up then the the shoots us on there. You know, you just made yourself two tubers out of one tuber, which again, nothing wrong with that at all. And if you were out in America, which we order from now and again, we get from them what is called a chicken leg. And that's what you'll get. When they class American tubers, this is a tuber from America. If you go online, look at the way they sell them. They sell them for around about five or six dollars each. Now, when you get them, they'll have been trimmed quite nicely and cleaned. And nine out of ten times, they never send a label with them. They'll just write the name on the tuber. So you get a little box coming that we, we order some every year, very inquisitive about the American varieties. One variety which we bought two years ago, we're gonna we're doing a lot with. It's a pure white decorative. It's called AC Casper. Uh, it stands all the weather and no problem at all with the rain, no problem at all with the wind. It stood outside and grown on really well. But it started off with a tuber like that. And what they do, they look for that one little shoot that's there. You all got to look very closely. It, there's that one little shoot. And that's what they sell as a tuber, that one. But that, planting that one singly straight up and I've actually got one here, which I was showing on another talk a couple of weeks ago. And this is the one shoot, and I'm going to take out this one tuber that's in there. There's the one little tuber. There's the new root coming on it, you can see there. And that was the one shoot that was on the top of the tuber. Now, as you can see, that's making its root. That will be one plant. Next year, the tuber will come off there and that will be a perfect tuber then for growing on to produce cuttings for the next couple of years. But on that, we'll make that one piece, as you can see there, to the next piece. You can see how thin that one was. It doesn't have to be thick. As long as there's an eye on that 
tuba that we've got there, you could go along and so this one, you could make sure and cut another one off as in going into your tuba like that and cutting in and you've got one eye there, one eye there. I wouldn't cut those down the middle. I'd leave that, replant that again. So there's another one tuba. And you can just go around and just keep cutting into this tuba. There, you've got one tuba and you've got one shoot there. You've got another shoot there, another one on the corner. So there would be another one. So. You know, if you've only got one tuber of something that you really like and you want to make more, don't be afraid to just go in and do what I'm doing now. I just broke one and looking in there again, look, you can see on there, there's an eye there, the red eye there. So you could then just separate that one down and another tuber. Grow those on, you know, they'll make tubers like these, like we've just been showing you throughout this year. So, have we got any questions with anybody? <laughs> no? Yeah, I've got questions. I've sent everybody to sleep, it is, that's what it is. Yeah. <laughs> I've got a question, uh, Rob. I'm yeah. only about five miles away from you in Land Mice near Lantwit. Yes. Um, and uh, we got our Christmas tree from you this year. It, Is it good work? Is it good? Well, I, we've planted it out when it's losing its leaves, but we're still hopeful. Um, I, would it be possible to come over and see you sometime? Yes, by all means, yes. Anytime, yes. Are you, are you open? Is the nursery open? We are. We are starting to open, we're open by appointment only, but, uh, you know, joys of the Vale Council. Uh, but no, just give us a ring and uh, you can come over anytime. Oh, thank you. Sorry to... Uh, that's not there. a problem. We've got, uh, you can have, that's all right, you can have a look around. Anybody's welcome at any time. You know, it's, uh, at the moment we're here, there's five of us on the nursery most of the time, so... Weekends, I'm here from uh, 7.30 on a Saturday morning till about 7.30 Sunday night. So, right. Okay. <laughs> yeah, so quite welcome to come over any time. Thank you. Could I Rob. just ask... Oh, go on, go on. Yeah. Sorry, could I just ask a question about... You, you were cutting a tuber up then, and then you were talking about taking cuttings. What is the best to do, to take cuttings or to cut the tuber up? best way is to take cuttings rather than cutting the tuber up mm -hmm. you know we, what I'm finding what I say about cutting tubers if you've got the facilities to take your own cuttings you know a plant like this now will make such a tuber ready you know it'll flower this year and it'll produce if you want to keep the tuber mm -hmm. you know we grow most of most show, for instance, anybody growing for exhibition will grow off cuttings. Okay, the the cut flower market is completely different. Cut flower, we want uh, bunches, and I think I put a picture of bunches up earlier on. Or have we got a picture of bunches? I think I have. And when we market in bunches, you want a nice stem that's about fifteen inches in length, really to get it to show that there's plenty of, uh, of color. If I was, you know, if I was you, you're better off taking cuttings rather than cutting tubers up. Unless you've got a tuber that's maybe two or three years old, then that would be the, you know, that would be, if we go down, there we are, we've got some bunches there. That's it, there we are. Those are the bunches that we, you know, we sell into the, the wholesale market. Uh, we normally put 10 blooms in a bunch. Um, some of them are mixed and we just use normal. In fact, the paper comes from, um, it's chip paper. Uh, it's, it's an ideal size, wrap it in the newspaper. It looks like newspaper and people really like it. But for cut flower, right the way through the summer, 
dahlia tubers as well during September time they'll because they've been flowering for such a long time from the end of July on they tend to start to throw less flower unless you're cutting them back regularly so that you're cutting down the stem so that what happens when you cut down the stem so for instance when like for instance this was getting a bit wilted now when you've cut the first the flowers off the first ones cut the flowers off the second you've got to keep cutting back down the stem mm. to get new side shoots with the tubers they tend to go out of steam by about the end of august early september the flowers are getting smaller they're getting weaker with the dahlia plants the growth is that much quicker with a plant than it is with a tuber and the flowers as long when you cut down you've got less of a framework on a plant so when you cut that one flower down, you cut it above the leaf joint, those next two shoots will come up again and they'll flower with long stems and the, the blooms of the same size are just slightly smaller than the first ones. Okay. So hence why we grow most of our cut flower. You know, our early ones in the tunnel is off tubers, mainly because we just want to get cut flower at a premium price. Through the summer months of July, August and September, they'll all be from the, the plants that's outside because we want a quality stem that is harder, say, for instance, um, a stronger stem than it. Because it, it, July and August and September, indoors in the polytunnels, they've grown like triffids. They'll, you know, a plant that would normally grow 10 inches in the summer months will grow 20 inches in a tunnel and you get very soft you'll have growth like that now, but with a flower head that's going to be mm. floppy. So you want the outside and plants are better outside. Okay, thank you. Does that answer your question? Yeah. yeah. Yes, thank you. Good. Uh, can I just ask Rob, I've got um, some uh, dahlias, I can't remember, I've got cat chat noir and something else. Um, yes. And I want yeah. To, they're in the ground. I keep my dahlias in the ground. Um, in the ground, right. Um, and I'd like to take cuttings off them. Can I go and dig them up now and bring them indoors to, to bring yes. them up? Yes, you, you can, yes. Yeah. yeah. Just lift them now. Uh, so what you'll be lifting, you'll be lifting something like that now. Yeah, probably about you know, the, bigger, the, actually. <laughs> Yeah, he's going to say yes. Yeah, no, this is a one year one. Well, you'll be picking up something that could be, you know. Uh, well, I don't dig them because they're so enormous. You could be picking... Yeah. Yeah. But don't be afraid to divide them. Just put the, get two forks together. Yeah. Put, them, put the forks in together and then push them together and it'll split the tuber up. And then when you split the two, you know, the crust. And this is what I tell everybody, when they're looking to buy tubers, you know, when, you, when you're allowed back in the garden centres now to buy, but I never look at the tuber, like for instance, on the, the Dutch ones, I wouldn't even, I wouldn't bother about all this. That to me is nothing. The most important place is around the crown of the stem around here, because that's where all the shoots are going to come from. You know, you don't get shoots coming off a tuber. The shoots only come from the crown itself. Like you can see there, where the tuber joins, you've got the shoot. Where the tuber joins, these are where the shoots are coming from. So no, don't be afraid to lift them. Get your cuttings, you know, as I was saying, you know, that that is a lovely cut in now, you know. Which would be here, you don't need so much heat to root the cuttings. You know, they'll root most probably in about 10 days to two weeks. You know, we don't use rooting hormone powder. You know, we're straight. You can take, you know, a lot of people as well will take cuttings. If you do take them with a knife, make sure you're using a sharp knife. But and don't know what I'm about to show you. But against uh, a board right underneath the leaf joint, and clean cut and again trim those off problem being is when you take cut-ins this way that's why i haven't showed you this 
you don't get as good a tuba. You'll find you may get a tuba with one tuba on it because there's only one home, one area of good hormone. The closer you can take the cutting from the tuba, it makes a much better tuba. And that's why we pull, like I showed earlier on, when we had all these, all the cuttings, when we pull the cutting like that, we are taking more hormone because it's closer to the tuber. Okay. Any any more questions? Is that, uh, is that okay? Yeah, that's lovely. Thank you. Yep. Anybody else with any questions? We Rob. think we might like to come on a group visit, Rob, if that's all right with you, whenever, yes, um, yeah, whenever it's yeah. possible. August time, August, September would be good. Super. Because then we'll have all the, because what we, with our tubers that we grow to sell, we, we let them flower once and then we just cut them all down after. What I mean, cut down, we keep cutting them down. We don't let them flower after they flowered once. So we're just trying to get more growth into the tuber then rather than into the, the uh, plant itself. Do you have any um, varieties that you recommend for an exposed site outside? Exposed site, oh, right. Um, now, one variety I've put up as a photograph is called Kitty, which, Sarah will put up in a second, I expect. Now, this is a very strong growing variety. And again, it takes quite a bit of the weather, but it makes a large bush. It'll grow to about five, that's Hillcrest effusion. This is Kitty. It'll grow to about five to six foot in a year. But, you know, it, it is a very strong grower. With all dahlias, you know, if it is exposed, you will need to support them in some way. You know, even if it's just around this, the periphery of the plant. Now, you know, we grow a lot of our dahlias on mesh. So we just lift the square mesh up as the dahlia is growing. And uh, that helps, you know, but if it's really exposed, you want to go perhaps more of the smaller varieties, some of the palms. Uh, so, for instance, the, these ones we've got there, the little ball ones, they are very good as well for exposed areas. Uh, the plants are a bit shorter. They're around about three to four feet in height. But in one summer, I'd expect around about three to four hundred blooms off one plant. And they would most probably be the better ones to grow. Those there we've got, they're off the website. We've got a mixture of fimbriated, collarettes, um, anemone centered and the ball ones. Now, the one at the far, the pink at the top right hand corner, that's called Ivana. Now it's quite a new variety. Yeah, that's quite a new variety and uh, a little bit different. It's more of an orchid dahlia rather than a decorative dahlia. Uh, we've grown it for the last two years, and it's one now that we've uh, we're going to be growing a lot of over the next two years. And what would be your top three varieties, Rob? Sales wise, no Magenta chance. Star, Cafe au lait, Creme de Cognac. They're the top three for roughly the last two years. Um, my favorite daily myself is Clearview Debbie, which I brought in from America about five years ago. Uh, and this new AC Casper, which we've hopefully by the end of this year, we'll have around about 250 tubers for next year. It's a pure white and um, it's got such a long straight stem that, uh, and it stands the weather. But it's more of a, a reflex in dahlia. It's a decorative, but more reflexing down. So it's, uh, it is a very, and it's not a, 
It's not a big bloom. It's it's about four to five inches across. But cut flower varieties, there's, you know, there are so many. Glory Van Hempstead has been around for years. The water lily varieties have always been the most popular varieties that we've sold for cut flower. Uh, Bracken Ballerina is a beautiful pink. Uh, that's most probably one of the, the nicer of those. Taratahi Ruby, obviously a nice glowing red. Uh, Kilburn Glow, again, another really good cut flower variety. All the ones I mentioned, they're all good, strong stems. And, you know, they're ideal.